If you have a Facebook group, you probably have membership questions in place. And if you don't, you should. Membership questions are the questions someone has to answer when they first join a Facebook group. And that is such good first party data. It is so important for a marketer and especially for someone running a Facebook group. But many people don't actually look at the answers. And that's for a number of different reasons. Maybe you're too busy. Maybe you had a different moderator notice it and approve the person, but they didn't record the answer somewhere. Maybe you just don't have a system to record answers and you're just kind of like, willy-nilly doing it most of us start that way let's be real maybe you have admin assist turned on and it's auto approving people before you see any of those answers whatever the case you want to see the answers to membership questions i promise you you want to know the answers and so i'm going to show you a very easy way to do that now I have another video on my channel about Group Collector, which is um, a Chrome extension. I always want to call it a plugin. It's an extension <laughs> that will automatically pull all the answers from membership questions for you. However, it can only do it for current people. Like the second someone does it, Group Collector needs to have already be been turned on. It cannot retroactively go and grab any answers from anybody. But the ability I'm going to show you today fixes that. You're going to be able to go and do this. No Chrome extensions, no plugins, no paid tools, just Facebook. It's entirely built into Facebook and most people don't know it exists. And I don't know why <laughs> and I think, well, I know why Facebook doesn't tell us things very well. So I'm going to tell you, Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Nina of she knows SEO. Today, we're going to be talking about Facebook groups. Now, Facebook groups are like one of my favorite ways of building community. I love community building. It is very much my superpower. And with Facebook groups, it's a really interesting kind of the only organic place to build a community where you are able to like, I don't want to say paywall it because it's not paywalled, but like privatize it, I guess, the way not everyone can be a part of it. It's also a great organic way to grow your email list. I use my Facebook group that's on the screen right now, SEO for travel bloggers as a lead magnet, which is so cool. Like you can genuinely use posts inside of this. If you want me to do another video explaining that exact method, let me know in the comments. Um, just say like, say lead magnet, I guess, or something. And I will, if enough of you ask for it, I will do it. <laughs> but with these groups, you do want to get all that first party data. That is so important. Most people have membership questions for their group. And like I said before, if you don't, you really need to. And that's for a number of reasons. Number one, it prevents spam. Bots often join groups without answering any questions so you can auto deny them, which is really good. Get them out of there. We do not want bots. We do not want spam. We also probably don't want like, I don't know, someone's like Uncle Jake, who's like 70 and doesn't actually know how Facebook works. And it's just going to share like weird memes to the group. Like if someone cannot figure out how to answer the questions, especially for a group, in my opinion, like mine, that's like for bloggers, if they can't figure out that tech. It's probably not going to be a great fit for them. Now, it's also important because that's a space where you can ask them for first party data, where you can find out what they're struggling with. You can find out how they found this group. Um, you can also collect emails. So that's actually how you turn this into a lead generation system. There's a little bit more to it than that because you need to like have a reason people will give you their email and you need to have a way to collect them. Many people, when they start their group, they have that like, hey, go here to like sign up. Someone will put in their email but then they never verify the two. I've had that issue myself. Another reason you might have these is that maybe you have a paid group on Facebook. I have one for my SEO for travel blogger or SEO roadmap for travel bloggers, uh, Facebook group that's for my paid, um, my paid course. And so for that, I need to make sure that everyone joining is a student in that course. So I have to cross reference their emails with the email they use to purchase. However, if someone defaults on a payment plan, if, um, I don't know, I used to have a membership, maybe someone just like leaves the membership, I need to go in and make sure that like only the people who are active members of the course or the membership are in that group. But a lot of people have different Facebook names than they do for um, like their PayPal and stuff. Many people have aliases on Facebook, so it can be hard to cross reference if you weren't keeping track initially. The method today fixes that. So I'm going to stop yapping and we're going to dive right in and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. You will need to have a Facebook group. That's important. You will also need to be a moderator or an admin for that Facebook group. Now, if you are not, you won't see these. There's no way to see membership questions if you do not run or are like 
in the moderation team for a group. And that's for privacy reasons. We're all glad that happens, to be honest. So because of that, that's gonna be the first thing you need to go and make sure you have set up, um, especially if you have like multiple accounts that you're using. This won't work if that's not gonna happen. Okay, you do need to have membership questions as well. You can definitely see the fact that you don't have any if we do this, but um, it, this really won't benefit you unless you make sure that you do have membership questions somewhere for your group. Then once you have that, you're ready to get started. So now go into your Facebook group. I am in SEO for travel bloggers right now. This is my free group, little promo, join. We're great. It's my favorite place to hang out. I active procrastinate there all the time. So I am in there far too often, um, answering very in-depth questions. It's a great place to learn together. And it's not just for travel bloggers. I just, I'd have to rebrand everything and I need a minute to do that. And I have not had a minute, <laughs> but you are welcome to join. So now you're gonna to wanna to go over to this members tab. The members tab is where you're gonna see everyone who's in the group. So you can either go through and click through every single person. If you know their name, you can search them here, but you can also notice that it is going to be structured by you first, then it's gonna have any admin, then moderators, any friends, anyone with similar interests or like they have something set that's similar to yours, then anyone who's unavailable, that's anyone who has blocked you, anyone who um, has been like removed from Facebook, Pro tip, delete those people. <laughs> they probably shouldn't be taking up space in your group. And then lastly, you're gonna have all the other members. So you can scroll through to find everybody. Typically, if you have a group that's like, mine's almost at 3000 now, um, I don't wanna scroll through every single person, <laughs> but don't make a habit of doing this every day, basically. So let's say Nina Clapperton joined this group, but maybe admin assist approved them because um, there were three questions that had been answered, but it didn't check the questions or it didn't record that information for me. I want to know, okay, what is Nina Clapperton's email? What you're going to do is come down to this person and you're just going to click on their name. It is that simple. So I'm going to click on Nina Clapperton. It'll open it up and here we go. This is Nina Clapperton's group profile. Now you will notice some things are blurred on the screen. That is not a glitch. That is something I did to protect the privacy of anyone in my groups, um, just because they didn't consent for their name to be in this video. So the blurs are, you won't see those. You'll see normal stuff, okay? <laughs> but as we go through this, you'll notice that there's a lot of extra information I'm gonna like kind of skim past here. You should spend some time getting used to like this area because it's a really cool spot to like learn about people in your group. So if you scroll down um, past the badges usually, now if someone doesn't have a badge, if they're not an admin, if you don't have like top contributor and stuff turned on, this might not show. Sometimes the last thing that shows is the member summary. Then we'll, we're gonna have membership questions here. So membership questions um, are going to be the spot that we want. Sometimes there's recent photos, sometimes beneath that recent activity, depends on how active the person has been. But this is where we're gonna be able to find if they have answered any questions. At a glance, we can see Nina Clapperton didn't answer any questions and did not agree to group rules. That's not great for Nina Clapperton, except that I run this group so they didn't exist when I joined. <laughs> and so because of that, I wanna see, maybe, maybe Nina did answer one question. It'll say that question's answered, but it won't say that I answered all three. If I click on this, it's going to bring up the questions for my group as they are today. So here we can see no answer, no answer, no answer. And that's because when I created the group, none of these existed. But if you do change these questions, um, typically it seems to like, and I can't guarantee this for every single group, but it does seem to like cross-reference that like even if the question changed, if someone put an answer into question one, it still pulls it over. It seems to be a bit finicky, but before you change any questions, go check this first just to make sure that you don't like mess it up. If you just reword the question, it'll definitely do that. But if you remove the question and bring it back in, sometimes that like deletes the answers. I, I can't guarantee it. It changes a little bit, but if you just reword it, then it's usually fine. I've never had an issue with that. But here I can see, here are the questions. And let's say I did have an email here and I just hadn't added it to my convert kit yet. I could copy it now, go over to convert kit, and add them. And that's like really how simple it would be, especially if you don't have anything set up to automatically do all of this. Um, this is the simplest way to grab them. And the simplest way, in my opinion, would be group collector, <laughs> but for, other, for people who joined before you had that active, this is how you do it. You can also make sure they agree to group rules. Now, if you have people that you're noticing didn't answer anything and haven't agreed to group rules, that could be for a number of reasons. So number one, if they were invited by you, if you invite people to your group, especially from your page or from like your friends list, 
it will usually let them in without showing them the questions. You'll notice that as well um, in requests. If someone invites another member to the group that it will not, typically they won't answer the questions because it doesn't show them to that person. So um, it's a flaw in the system. Unfortunately, it just happens. So that might be why. It could also be that maybe you deleted all your questions and then brought them in. Maybe no questions existed when that person joined. Uh, maybe you didn't require group rules at the time. There's all sorts of situations. So don't stress too much if someone's already in your group, as long as they're like behaving, I leave it alone, um, unless it's a paid group, obviously. But otherwise, this is something you can do to go double check everything. And it really is this simple and it will be there for everyone. I know I checked just mine here. That is to respect the privacy of people in my group. I don't wanna give out anyone's email and stuff like that. No one needs to be blasted on my YouTube channel. Um, but this will work even if it's not your own profile. And then I do recommend scrolling through this area. You can get a lot of really good engagement information. You can see how people are interacting in the group um, and you can get kind of a handle on uh, maybe like there's one person that you need to respond to, but you couldn't find where they posted it. This is a great spot to kind of get a direct, um, get like a direct feed almost of that person's involvement in the group. So this has been um, our session on going through your group membership questions and finding any questions and answers that people had asked earlier on in your group. This is a really important thing to do, especially if you've never done it before. And if you've ever asked people for their emails, go and get those emails. People, honestly, it happens so often in my group where people join, give me their email address, and about 50%, I would say, especially for a group like mine where I say, this is required to join. This is a student only group. It is required. Um, just for anyone's reference, this is my free group, but I call it student only because you have to be in like my email list. You get a freebie, even my students with freebies, they are students now. That's how I kind of consider that. But, um, I need to, 50% of them, pardon me, 50% of them have not actually joined my email list yet. So I would be losing out on tons of emails and there'd be a lot of people then who, um, aren't also like aren't staying up to date on stuff the amount of times people will be like hey nina like um i don't think i'm getting your emails and it turns out they just like never approved it for some reason we ended up turning that off that was a whole separate thing um, but essentially people would then get upset that they were missing out on stuff so for me that's why i do it this way it's also for you you're putting a lot of effort into these groups or you should be anyway so you want to make sure you are collecting that information I recommend making a spreadsheet of all of this or like an Airtable database of everything. And ultimately, if you're gonna be doing this a lot, if you need to spend more than like 30 minutes a month doing this, get Group Collector. It's currently at time of recording on AppSumo for like $79 and I'm sure that'll change eventually, but it is a much easier system so that you don't need to do this a ton going forward. Um, and it'll track things like for your paid groups, like I mentioned earlier, it can auto approve them um, if their email is associated with a purchase. It's pretty easy to set that up. If y'all also want me to do a more in-depth video on that, also just post that in the comments, let me know, and I can definitely uh, make one of those for y'all as well. But essentially, you're gonna save a lot of time with that doing it automatically. This way is really more of a, oops, <laughs> I missed the question sort of a situation. I don't think it's the most sustainable thing to do every single time. But I would also leave you with this. If you do not have membership questions set up, that's a mistake. Set up membership questions. You get up to three, have bare minimum one to make sure your group isn't spammy, but also to make sure that you are collecting some great first party data. Feel free to like get an idea based on the ones that I have on screen right now. Um, please do not copy them verbatim. I don't need people joining my email list from your group about like crafting or something. They'll be very confused. Um, try, like test out different things. I change mine kind of fairly regularly to get new ideas and test different things. Um, it is the best way to get to know your audience when they are first joining. Kind of like, I don't know, an intake form, I guess. Okay, this has been super fun. I hope you guys are so ready to go and collect your membership questions. Um, I will see y'all next Thursday. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. If you wanna see more videos, um, I talk about all things blogging, all things community building, and making money from a blog. And yes, Facebook groups are a very big part of that to me. Um, they are also just super fun. If you have any video requests that you'd like to see, anything you're struggling with, please ask it in the comments. If you want some like more in-depth, um, 
kind of like, I don't want to say coaching because it's not coaching, but if you have like more in-depth questions, I do ask people to post in my free Facebook group so everyone can learn together and then I can give more in-depth answers because like, I'm just one lady. I can't answer like 10 paragraphs on every platform. <laughs> so I hope to see you in there and I will see y'all next week. Bye. Have a lovely day.